KSL Narsimangaru to address the gathering. Your Excellency, Sri Paramasivam Pulle Vayapuri Avargal, Chief Minister of Andhra Pradesh, respected Sri Chandrababu Nayadagaru, respected Sri Suresh Prabhu, Union Minister of Commerce and Industry, respected Sri Ashok Gajapati Raju, Union Minister for Civil Aviation, respected Sri Ishwaran, Honorable Minister of Trade and Industries of the Republic of Singapore, Sri Solomon Arogya Raj, and Sri Chandrajit Banerjee, distinguished delegates, gracious ladies and gentlemen. At the outset, may I request all of you to join me in offering our very best wishes to Sri Nara Chandrababu Naidu Garu, who today completes four decades of public service. It is in fact exactly today, because tomorrow I think he starts his fifth decade of achievement and glory. So now starts the decade of achievement and glory. These four decades have been one of slog, and now you are going to get the fruits of your slog in the next decade ahead of you, commencing tomorrow. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm extremely happy to be present here on the occasion of the valediction of this wonderful summit. For me, this has been a hat-trick. the third time that I'm coming into for this uh, summit. And my relationship with Mr. Chandrababu Naidu, for all of your career information, is now exactly three decades old. So it is not that I have known Mr. Chandrababu Naidu only today after becoming the governor of Andhra Pradesh and Telangana. The man who is known for his mission and his vision and his execution, that is what Chandrababu Naidu sums up and all. Today, as we talk of global integration, the globe has become, a, the whole world has become a global village. And I think all of us owe it a duty to sort of satisfy humanity at large. I think people's happiness is paramount today and nothing else. Business interests, certainly, collaborations, certainly, but I think the underlying emphasis should be on people's happiness. And that is why these summits these various partnerships, these various science signatures of various memorandum of understanding is all being done basically to bring about the people's happiness and increase their level of living. In fact, my dream is such partnerships and growth factors should result at some point of time sooner than later in the complete abolition of this terminology called below poverty line. There shall be no poverty and I'm confident that with Mr. Chandrababu's efforts, poverty shall vanish from the state of Andhra Pradesh and this concept of below poverty line will no longer exist, which means we will be able to use our resources more fruitfully for developmental activities. Ladies and gentlemen, our Honorable Prime Minister has given us his vision of New India 2022. And we are looking at Andhra Pradesh also from the same angle of a new Andhra Pradesh by 2022. What is a new, a new India, no, new Andhra Pradesh really mean? And why is it that we are all requesting you to come and invest here in Andhra Pradesh? The basic requirement for, any, for anybody to come in is the infrastructure. When you look at infrastructure, we look at road connectivity. We have excellent road connectivity in the, within the state. We have national highways. We're looking at rail connectivity. We're looking at airport connectivity the port connectivity. We have the longest coastline available here. And we are also looking at inland waterways to be utilized for purpose of transportation. So that is where I find the infrastructure as far as the state of Andhra Pradesh is concerned. Here we have it laid out before you. The second most important aspect that one would look at is communication. Because ultimately, you will have to communicate with each other. And that is where I think we have the internet connectivity extremely well served in the state of Andhra Pradesh. And apart from internet connectivity, one of the things that must be worrying many of you is the security of communications. 
we are conscious of the fact of the security of communications and therefore we're looking at cryptography as a major thing thing and so security of communications will certainly be taken care of the third aspect that everybody will be looking at is the ease of doing business how easy is it to really come into Andhra Pradesh and invest we look at ease of doing business ladies and gentlemen may I tell you the state has figured at the number one slot in the country in the ease of doing business when I say ease of doing business it is not just coming and investing it is because it is apart from the ease of doing business it is also the friendly nature of the people with whom you are transacting business I think the friendliness is also very important because everything cannot be just business life cannot be a business it cannot be commerce life has to be life because you are dealing basically with human beings and you will realize that this is a state which is known for its friendliness so the investment climate is very friendly the investment processes are very friendly and the you know, ease of doing business is very friendly and that is why we are sort of requesting you all to come and invest here the fourth factor that one would look at is what is the security environment before you go in for an investment because every every investor is going to ask this question how secure is my investment i as a first citizen of the state can assure you that this state is absolutely secure from all angles there will be no fear of your investment going or as far as this state is concerned in terms of security i think we are right on top the other factor that you're looking at is the environmental factor how good is the environment the investment environment or also the overall environment greening is one of our major things because we are also well against pollution so i will also request that any investment which comes into the state please keep the environment let it be environment friendly and let us sort of ensure that pollution is kept away from us at another thing that one would look at is energy security when you look at energy security here we have it we have energy available 24 by 7 we are not only looking at thermal energy but we are also looking at alternate source of energy solar energy solar energy is something in which we have gone in a very big way in the state because that is one thing which is going to loss because sunshine has benefited on the Pradesh the Sun always shines over this state and that is one advantage that we'll have if we come in here in terms of solar energy then we look at other factors like what is the what are all the prospects the avenues are wide and large you have you name it and the avenues available for you starting from aqua to physiculture to aquaculture to business environment to technology technology is one thing which I think is something the order of the day well I, am, I was the other day I was reading it somewhere that we're probably going to establish one of the biggest AI units in Amaravati let me tell you gracious ladies and gentlemen that today you're all talking of artificial intelligence we by nature India by nature has always had natural intelligence much more than artificial intelligence today it is artificial but we have known for our natural intelligence and what is the robotics that we are talking about robotics is nothing but fast computing procedures and let me tell you ladies and gentlemen that in our country the computing capability of the human brain is much faster than probably a supercomputer in many cases and our brain retention power I mean, we're talking about artificial intelligence today I mean here are people who can probably recite because over the years it has been by word of mouth that the word knowledge has been transmitted in this country and therefore the, the concept of artificial intelligence and robotics is coming in is most welcome and we'll be very be happy but while you're looking at technology my only request is there's probably an apprehension in some cases that technology is a substitute for human resources I think that is an apprehension which is not probably born out of facts but probably a certain imagination and that I think we need to sort of uh, ally to people saying technology is more an add-on factor it is a facilitator it is something is going to be a multiply factor and not a substitute so technology as a sub as, as an alternate as, as an add-on factor as a multiply factor I think will do wonders for people and here in Andhra Pradesh of course as the chief minister has already told you we have something called the real-time governance it's almost impossible to work with a man like Chandra Babu Naidu well, he is a man who's all the time looking at his machines and trying to say whether, whether Mr. Nara Lokesh has smiled when I said this or did not smile. I mean, this is the type of monitoring that this man does. I think in terms of monitoring, I think, sir, you should really be prosecuted because you are monitoring my personal life also. You try and see whether, whether the waste paper basket has been cleared in road number so and so or not cleared in so and so. I mean, it is a total intrusion. It's almost intrusive technology is what Mr. Chandra Babu Naidu has gone in by this concept of real-time governance, but it really plays wonders. It keeps people on their feet all the time. 
and that is, I think, very necessary for development purposes. Because today, whatever we are doing in terms of technology is really more as a facilitator as to multiply the advantages that we are going to get out of investment. So, gentlemen, I would like to tell you that these are the great advantages that you will have in Andhra Pradesh, and you are most welcome to come here and invest, because you will find that you know, your, your investments will grow by the year. I would like to hear, quote a sort of repeat a small quotation of Swami Vivekananda, who, while explaining the meaning of association, said, I quote, a, a raindrop from the sky, if it is caught by clean hands, is pure enough for drinking. If it falls into other places, it goes into waste. If it falls on a hot surface, it will evaporate. If it falls on a lotus, lotus, it will lead to, it will it will sort of shine like a pearl. And finally, if it falls on an oyster, it becomes a pearl. The drop is the same, but it is the existence of association that matters. And that is where I think Andhra Pradesh comes in. Whatever you drop in here, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, it will become a pearl. It will not evaporate. It will not be just pure drinking water. And that is the greatness of Andhra Pradesh. And to conclude, I would like to say, Devyo Sajjano, Vikas ka nara Andhra Pradesh hamara. Dhanyavad. Thank you very much, sir, for your very assuring words.